hey, hey, it's Carrington from Real Dudes Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to another fantastic episode of Crossplay Compatible. With me, I've got, as always, Roger. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. And how are you today, Roger? I am well. I'm very excited because we have more people joining us. Yes. From the Crossplay Compatible Network. Oh, yeah. So... With the other two guests we have, how about you guys introduce yourselves and your podcast to our, our guests? Hey, everybody, this is Mike uh, with the Controller Throwers podcast, part of the Crossplay Compatible Network. So, thanks so much for having me on the show. I'm really excited for this. And I'm Chris from Play Comics, and I'm excited to be here as well. You stole my line. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's excited. Let's do this. I'm so pumped. And we also have, uh, I mean, they're not on the show, but we have other podcast as well hopefully they'll come on sometime soon yeah so this is gonna be the format here is gonna be just an open invitation we're gonna try to do these sunday nights but then come up monday hopefully (laughs) and then uh and then yeah so i'll be different uh different people on the show so all right i do have a icebreaker let's hear it i'm ready uh so with the game that we're talking about today Icebreaker is, does Karen didn't have his mic on? No. <laughs> <laughs> it is now. <laughs> the icebreaker. What uh, What jobs? Uh, what was our first job that we had uh, growing up, I guess? So, Carrington. Yes. So, if you want to be, like, technical, my first job I had was I worked with a friend. He was a carpenter, and I helped him lay carpet, which was interesting but if you want to count like my first job i did like consistently on a day-to-day basis um, i work for a catalog company called frontgate and they are a high-end outdoor furniture company and what my job uh, when i first started there was i would get the catalogs before they came out and then i had to proofread them check for grammar errors things like that and make sure different information or the all the information that was in the catalog matched up with what was in our system it's cool. not as cool. yeah, I was gonna say it's not as cool as it sounds. Trust me, <laughs> it was boring and tedious and long. Nice. All right. Um, who wants to go next? I'll jump in. Um, so my first job was I was twelve, and I uh, didn't realize how much they were ripping me off. So it was a summer job, and I was a camp counselor uh, for our, our city's uh, park district. Uh, their summer. Um, their summer uh, camping program. So, uh, you know, the parents would drop the kids off. It's, you know, eight o'clock and come back and pick them up at about three o'clock. Um, so my job was, I was a camp counselor. And the reason why is because they, well, I was 12 years old, so they couldn't pay me. Mm-hmm. So they paid me cash. Uh, I got fifth, I got $15 a week in Whoa. cash. What? That's it. And, That's yes. But I was like, that's, you know, I was like, I'm like, all right. So I I I would take my cash on every Friday and I would immediately go to the comic book store. Uh, Just, (laughs) hey, they were a dollar 75 at the time. So I was able to, to me, that was a ton. And then after it ended, I'm like, I sat back and I crunched the numbers and I'm like, I was getting paid 50 cents an hour at this place. Oh, like what a rip off. I'm like, this this isn't, this wasn't like the 1950s or anything like that. Uh, so I was like, oh gosh. So I'm like, no, I'm done with that. I was like, do you want to come back next year? I'm like, uh, no, thank you. I appreciate it, but no. <laughs> you could have gone so, to McDonald's yes. and made more. Yeah, really. Yeah. So yeah, so that was my first show. That was my first wow. gig. Nice. Well, speaking of McDonald's, actually, mine was a little <laughs> bit better than that. I was at Steak and Shake. Oh. And Ooh. went into their overnight shift. Ooh. Which which was kind of nice because there was like me and one cook and usually somebody else that would vary between a cook or a manager type person. But there was all kinds of weird things. Like they never told me what size chili to give people when they ordered chili. So (laughs) the first time I gave somebody chili, I gave them a salad bowl full of chili. And the guy looked at me like I was insane. And I was like, yeah, I know, but they never told me. So I'm going to make sure you get at least what you paid for. (laughs) <laughs> all kinds of things they didn't tell me uh working the, the night shift they you must have the best stories uh, we could probably do an entire podcast of steak and shake late night shift uh stories I, i'm sure you got all sorts of characters wandering in 
Yeah, we had or like five at least at the drive We had like five steak and shakes in the air area, so ours was the, <sighs> the slowest one. Oh, uh, so, so you didn't... there were a few good stories. Okay, so, so I, I've been to Steak and Shake late at night on several occasions, and I have I have some pretty good memories from both being with friends and the staff members as well. <laughs> nice, <laughs> just saying. Yeah, so so nothing major, no like hash slinging slasher would show up or something like that at no, the. No, I mean the best was either the day that we closed down the inside of the restaurant, so that we could go play air hockey at Walmart. Oh, nice. Nice. or the okay. day that this one guy, the on the day that he quit, grabbed a stack of gift cards and ran out the front door, <laughs> completely forgetting the part where you have to activate the gift cards or they're not going to do anything. <laughs> now, would you ever try and mess with people i didn't i mean we were okay. slow enough to where we didn't really have too many people coming in and they were nice enough when they came in they just wanted to eat and get left alone and so uh, we didn't worry about them too much there was nice. one steak and shake i went to consistently for about two to three years so i knew the staff there over the two or three years and it would be late at night and uh by, by there was one time that you would try like hey can you just try this? We just made this up. So you never tried anything like that? No, but they did forget to take me off the training pay. So I was getting oh. regular minimum wage plus tips. Oh, So that was pretty sweet. Ooh. That's not oh, bad. Nice. Nice. Uh, no. I can't believe none of you said Paperboy. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Oh. Yep. Yeah, that was my first job, actually. Really? Like an actual? Papers. It really like, was. What? Like, like wake up at four in the morning and start rubber banding all the all the papers and. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, um, it was it was weird. It was a free paper. I don't know why I got paid, but it was a free paper, and it was like 160 houses that we had to deliver to, and I was 12 and my brother was helping me and he was 10 and I always gave him the side of the street that was the most difficult and I always took the side <laughs> that had my grandparents' house on it. So I would <laughs> stop and have a soda or, you know, hang out with my grandparents for a while. <laughs> and the best part was, well, not probably not the best part, but <laughs> there was one time where my brother was getting mauled by a dog and I'm sitting oh. there having a cream soda with my, <laughs> my grandparents. Oh, <laughs> gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Which kind of leads into uh, the game that we're going to be talking about today, which is Paperboy. <laughs> you lived it. Yeah, you lived yeah. the game. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So the game uh, came out in 1985. So we'll talk about some of the events that happened in the year 1985. So um, anybody have anything that they wanted to bring up first with the year 1985? It was a good year. <laughs> a lot Karen, of good were you alive in the year 1985? I was not. I was five years away from being born. <laughs> <laughs> My parents celebrated their first wedding anniversary. Oh. So, Chris, you weren't born yet either? I was not born until 86. Oh. oh. So I'm not so, the only one who wasn't born yet. I it guess. feels good. It feels good to be, you know, that someone can can relate to me on some level. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Mike, you were born, right? <laughs> yeah, I was born. <laughs> oh, you mean oh, you mean prior to 1985. Oh, I thought you just meant like in general. Oh. <laughs> yes, yes, I, 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 I do exist. Um, yeah, no, I, so I was six uh, in 1985. So um, I, I, I got to say, man, because so my, my, my best memory of 85 was Back to the Future. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, and, and I loved Back to the Future. And I remember the first time I watched it, and I remember seeing that to be continued at the end. And I know it was only a five-year distance between Back to the Future 1 and 2, which nowadays to me is like nothing. But yeah. when I was a kid, that was an eternity. I remember like saying, what's going on? Is Back to the Future 2 even coming out? Are they even going to make it? And then all of a sudden... You know, five years later, I see the commercials for it. I'm like, oh, finally! What the heck took them so long? <laughs> so yes, I do remember things. Yeah, nice. <laughs> and I was nine-ish in the year 1985. So, um, 
So some some perspective here. The price of gas, uh, a gallon of gas, was a dollar nine. Gosh, nineteen eighty five. Don't I'll take uh, that? I yeah. would take that in a heartbeat. <clears throat> Another thing that we always talk about is movie tickets. The price mm-hmm. of a movie ticket was two dollars and seventy five cents. I'll take that as well. I just like I told you guys before we recorded. I saw Black Panther earlier today. It was twelve dollars, I think, for my ticket. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. A pound of bacon was a dollar sixty-five. Ooh. I don't know why they have that. Like that's <laughs> like some measuring. Like how much was a pound of bacon in this year? <laughs> uh, a beanbag lounger. Apparently, that was a big thing. Uh, that was forty bucks. And a pound bucks. of ribeye steak was three dollars and eighty nine cents. How much? Three dollars and eighty nine cents. Oh, I would be eating steaks all day, every day, if that was the case. <laughs> <laughs> and with they, bacon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, with bacon <laughs> on your big bean bag lounger. <laughs> no, that thing's expensive. You can't mess it up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, I don't know where this place is, Carrington. You might. Elira? Does that sound right? Ohio? Elira? Um, uh, this doesn't sound familiar. Okay. Well, it's a two-bedroom condo. That's, this is the cost of a two-bedroom two bedroom condo overlooking the lake. Was $60,000. 60? I, yeah. I mean, I can afford that, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but the average income was $22,000 in 1985. Oh, my. Yeah. Oh, my, oh, my. Yeah. I make more than that. <laughs> I would be rich. <laughs> oh yes. Oh yes. Uh so yeah. So those were some of the uh some cost of living in nineteen eighty five. Mm-hmm. Uh anybody have any other events that happened in nineteen eighty five? I'm trying to go through things really quick because I forgot to uh do my research for this episode. Well, but one thing that jumps out at me is that Studio Ghibli was founded in June and I that holds a special place in my heart because I grew up on on my neighbor Totoro. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um I'm looking up oh man, I, I'm looking up uh cartoons that were out yeah. in nineteen eighty five. So just going through some of these uh, shows I used to watch. So let's see, uh the Bernstein Bears. Oh yeah. that was a cartoon. Uh the Gummy Bears, the uh, Disney cartoon. Still, I still remember that theme song that's still stuck in my head to this gummy day. Gummy bears. <laughs> no, gummy bears bouncing here and there and everywhere. There that's right. Go. That's there you go. Exactly. <laughs> uh, G.I. Joe, of course. Yeah. Ooh, that's a classic. Mm-hmm. Um, Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling. Man, I used to watch that every Saturday morning. Yes. It's a cartoon with all the old WWF uh, uh, providing their actual voices and everything. Yeah. That was so cool. Yep. Oh, uh, Je- <laughs> Straight over my head. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Sorry. I don't remember a single episode. All I remember from like from that year is like every cartoon had a public service announcement at the end of it. Like, hey kids, you know, uh, you know, don't stick a fork into the into the wall outlet or something like that. <laughs> um, let's see, Gem and the Holograms. Oh, that yeah. was another one. Mask. Oh man, I remember Mask. Mask. That was, you know, yeah, that was it was kind of like so it was um the uh the the good guys and the it was, of course, everything in 85 was for in order to sell toys. That's all the cartoons were. They were half an hour advertisements. Yep. But these were awesome. These were cars that were weaponized, and they would have secret compartments that open up, and all these laser cannons and stuff would shoot out. There was, like, this 57 Chevy with a rocket launcher in the trunk. It was so cool. But uh, I remember those toys. They were, they were awesome. Uh, Robotech was 85. Great uh, show. Uh, He-Man's cousin. or It was a cousin or sister? She-Ra. Well, sister, whatever. Cousin, so, right? Sister. Sister, cousin, whatever. <laughs> some relation. Yeah, some kind of relation. And, of course, uh, the Thundercats. Oh. Thundercats. Nice. So, yeah. So, lots of, uh, lots of good, good things to do on a Saturday morning while just eating bowls of sugar. Oh, yeah. Those were great cartoons. Calvin and Hobbes came out in 1985. Really? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. I had no uh, idea. Let's see. And then, so so I was looking at some of the toys that came out in 1985. Mm-hmm. And uh, so this is, this, is, this is one that made me laugh when I saw this. This Kinder Gym. So it's like a plastic gym set. It's like dumbbells and like a bench, like a press bench. Like, <laughs> like why would a kid need this? But apparently in the 80s, that was the thing to do. That was 60 bucks to, to buy $60. this. 
<laughs> nice. That's a little bit insane. Thanks, but uh, no thanks. Yeah. Uh, and then um, Transformers was really big. So there was this um, Autobot, like, um, boombox that was really, I remember this. My Soundwave, had, man. Soundwave. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That yeah. was 20 bucks. I mean, now it looks like, I'm like, 20 bucks is not a lot, but 20 bucks back then was a lot, so. Wow, I didn't realize that was that much. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Man. Yeah, I remember I got Soundwave uh, for graduate, uh, when I graduated uh, like kindergarten into first grade. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, so, that thing was cool. That was awesome. And, and when you look back now, like I look at the price of toys and I think to myself, man, I can't believe my parents spent that kind of money on toys and i mean they bought an nes for me and an nes at the time was two hundred dollars oh wow yeah and That's remember like... an average pay was twenty two thousand, and i think my my dad was in that range so wow that's crazy that's like buying a playstation 3 nowadays for 599 us dollars Isn't that crazy yeah that is crazy actually that hurts <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, one last thing I found scrolling, yeah. finding stuff. Um, I'm a huge Reds fan and, you know, love him or hate him. Pete Rose becomes the all time leader in September of 1985 with 4,192 oh. hits at Riverfront stadium. Wow. Nice. Crazy. He still frequents Reds yeah. games quite often. Wow. I see him from time to time down there. <laughs> really? Oh yeah, he he attends Reds games all the time. And you see him? Yeah. Like in person? Yeah. Oh, you say <laughs> hey Pete Rose? Oh no, he doesn't like to be bothered. So oh. <laughs> there are horror stories. So I just I'm just I just I just like, oh look, there's Pete Rose, and then I can see you watching the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um the the top five movies, highest grossing movies of eighty five. Number five was Out of Africa. Number oh, four man. number four was the color purple. Good movie. Uh, number three was Rocky Four, starring. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, number two was Rambo: First Blood Part Two, and number one we touched on was Back to the Future. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, it winner. made it made two hundred and ten million dollars. Wow. That seems like that's, really low by now. That's us. Like standards. <laughs> that's a budget for today's movies. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah, yeah. A budget for a Super Bowl ad in today's. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Um, So something else that I thought was interesting in 1985. So Coca-Cola comes out with new Coke. And six months later, they went back to the original for formula and they called it Coke Classic, Coca-Cola Classic. And that name i think still is on the side of the cans is coca-cola classic yeah. i think it is yeah so uh, i kind of remember new coke i kind of remember them trying that and everybody saying this is terrible what is this <laughs> the power the power of marketing that's what that yeah. is <laughs> or a lack of oh yeah that too <laughs> uh and then michael jackson buys uh every beatles song for 47 million dollars I was a huge Michael Jackson fan. I mean, after he died, that was the first thing I thought of. What happens to all the Beatles songs? I know, right? <laughs> $47 million, though? That seems really That's cheap. That's really, really low. It's a good investment. Yeah, yeah. real. I mean, yeah. I would have bought that if I had $47 million. And just laying around. <laughs> just yeah. laying around. I think speaks yeah. a testament to harmonics for being able. I don't know how in the world they got the rights to make the Beatles rock band, but I think just hats off to them for the licensing for that because I know it had to be a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then the other thing that I saw too was that the song We Are the World came out in 1985. Nice. Great song. <laughs> uh, yeah. So those were today. Yeah. Some good times. 1985 seems like a fantastic year, actually. It was awesome. <laughs> oh, and it was CDs a good time actually to were introduced in 1985. Ooh. Gosh. Wonder how how much the first CD player was back then. Yeah. Thirty-seven That's... million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, one time, I think, Carrington, we saw, we looked up, I don't remember what year it was. It was around this time, but it was a, a, a video phone, and it was like $2,000. Wow. 
Yeah. Yeah, it was around this time. Like, 86, I think, was the year. Yeah. That was crazy. And now to think that everybody's phone has some way of doing some kind of Skype or something. Yet, how often do we use it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that was 1985. Uh, Chris, did you see anything else? No, I think we hit all the big things. It's kind of leaving the video game stuff for the end. So if, the, yeah. if there's anything else yeah. that anybody noticed from 85. Uh, um, no, I didn't see anything. Um, like I said, I had to do like a quick check, 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 check. And I didn't see anything. Yeah. Oh, oh, I do have something. Um, ATI Technologies was founded in 1985, so all of you AMD processing slash graphics card loving people like me, um, all that stuff started in 1985. Crazy. And actually, the first dot com was in 1985 as well. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, dot edu still were the norm back then, apparently, but dot the first dot com was in. Uh, 1985, so. By Symbolics Corporation. I don't even know what that is. Doesn't sound familiar. Hmm, all that's right, all uh, I got. Should we move on to the games that came out in 1985? I sure. Think so. I think we should. All right. Because I feel like, once again, 1985 was a fantastic year. Oh, my gosh. It was an amazing year. Uh, Chris, do you want to start us off? Well, some would say it was the best year because you had the savior of the video game market everything over here in North America, the Nintendo Entertainment System. Yep. Oh, yeah. Coming complete with the option of having a toy robot, so in case the video games failed, you still had a toy robot. <laughs> as in Rob? Yes, as in Rob. <laughs> do, you, do you remember anybody having one? My, my uncle did. Um, so there, one of the kids I went to school with, he had it and, um, you know, they played, I used, I would just watch them play gyromite and watch that robot, watch Rob just like spin around and grab the discs and just drop them. It was really cool to watch. I, I had no idea how, um, you know, how, how sophisticated quote unquote that was, but yeah, it was really cool to see. And by the, the way, idea that if you didn't, if you didn't have friends, you had Rob at least, right? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I think there were only two games that, that Rob worked with. I know one I know one was Gyromite, but I forgot what the other one was. Stack up. Stack up. Okay. Oh. Ooh. And I've never played either of those games. You're not so. missing much. <laughs> <laughs> that was quick. I was gonna say I uh, growing up, I had no idea Rob even existed until Super Smash Brothers I think it was in Brawl was his first appearance. Yep. Yeah, I had no idea who Rob was until Brawl came out, yeah. Have you ever seen one in the wild? No, I've never seen one. Okay, Carrington. They're really cool. They are. They really look cool. cool. They're awesome. They are awesome. And, I mean, I've and seen them on the internet and stuff, Carrington? but never. Yeah. I'll, I'll, they have one at Jake's store. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I I would love to see one in person. What's it priced at now? <laughs> uh I don't think that one's for sale. Actually, he oh, he won't okay. sell it. So. Yeah, I can Good see for that. him. Good for him. Yeah. But it is pretty funny because it just sits there <laughs> collecting dust. <laughs> it is, that is a collector's item now. 80 yeah. bucks, looks like. Oh. 70, between 50 and 70, I think. Not Actually, so that's not too bad. Yeah, that's not too bad. I'll you take it. I'd take it. Even if it wasn't fully functional, just to have it as like a conversation piece, mm -hmm. you know, I'd take, you know, I'd go up to like our, you know, we have, uh, we have this this landing and stuff. We've got our wedding photos. It's my wife and I. So I'll just I'll just throw all those off and just put Rob right on top. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, would you see where the wedding photos are? No, but have you checked out the robot? <laughs> Pretty badass. <laughs> now, do you, now, this is kind of a personal question. Do you have kids? Yes, I have one kid. Or can you be like, well, back in my day, we had a robot. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've had those history lessons. I've hooked okay, up. Okay, okay. Yeah, I've hooked up the NES. Like, so, like, you know, he was supposed to do some chores, and he did, never did. So I punished him by putting on uh, suit, um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on the NES. Nice. And I'm like, now you play this game for an hour. Uh, <laughs> he, ne <laughs> he never made that mistake again. <laughs> I wouldn't either. 
Yeah, yeah. me neither. <laughs> the game was bad. <laughs> um, like... Well, uh, something I noticed, I'm not going to talk about video games, but I'm going to talk about video game companies that had a huge impact on probably all of our lives in one way or another that were founded in 1985. Ooh. And in no particular order, by the way. Uh, first, we have Bethesda was founded in 85. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think... Um, I don't think the first Elder Scrolls came out had come out. I don't think that was their first game. Um, no, it was Wayne Gretzky Hockey. That was their first game. Wow. And uh, Elder Scrolls did not come out until '94, so it, it would be a little while before they were be like actually on the map. Um, next we have Codemasters, which I love. Codemasters, they make some fantastic games. Um, I grew up playing uh, MTV Music Maker, which they had that series, but now they are known for the Formula One series, the F1 series, as well as Operation Flashpoint. Probably oh. some of the most realistic games you will probably ever play if you've never played them before. Wow. Um, especially Operation Flashpoint. As a military squad based shooter, it's fantastic. Fantastic. Wow. Um, Square. Uh, always founded in 1985. If you, you know, guys don't know, I mean, they have this little series called Final Fantasy, you know, as well as uh, Kingdom Hearts. Uh, they were founded in 1985. And wow. then, I mean, they were, and then last but not least, near and dear to my heart, may they rest in peace, Westwood Studios, known for the Command and Conquer series. Yeah. You mentioned those before. You mentioned that company before. I those game I cannot tell you like how much fun uh, me and my brother would have watching my dad play Command and Conquer like late at night that would be like our thing. The dad came home, you know, eat dinner, go down in the basement, watch that play Command and Conquer for uh, until we had to go to bed. And there would be times where my dad would uh, um, we would be asleep and then he would wake us up like guys guys I'm about to finish this level you know that level I've been stuck on for like a couple days he would wake us up and we'd go down in the basement he'd finish it then we watch the cutscene then go to bed. Wow. <laughs> That, nice. That's some great that's memories awesome. of Command and Conquer. And that, he did that for, I think we played all of them until Tiberium Sun, which that came out in the early 2000s. Wow. Oh, wow. A lot of uh, people prefer StarCraft, but I grew up with Command and Conquer, but that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so looking at some of these other games that came out in 1985, so... Um, I, I don't know. I'm just surprised that some of these games, like, uh, let's see, well, Duck Hunt and Super Mario Brothers, obviously. Um, but Ultima 4 came out in 1985? If that's what the press yeah, release what... says. Yeah. <laughs> so there was three Ultimas before that one? <laughs> I, I guess so. Nice. I guess Ultima 4 is supposed to be, like, the big one, right? Like, the one that, that's most popular? I'm just assuming that's just the one. I yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, that's I think so. And then Oregon Trail came out in 1985 too. Do you guys see that? Classic, classic. We got in so many fights in school over that game. <laughs> <laughs> that game was awesome. I was actually I was at Target today, um, and they actually re-released a handheld Oregon Trail that, and it's a, and it's um it looks like an old school PC. It's got the, um, and, you know, it's got like the fake disc drive with the little door that you pull down. Um, and um, the, all the keys look look like they are part of a keyboard. And so it's, I think it's like 25 bucks. But if you have a target near you, check it out. They've got a um, fully functional, portable Oregon Trail. Wow. That's cool. Impressive. That is cool. Most uh -huh. impressive. Go we'll check that out. I, yeah. I did not play the original until I got much older. I, I grew up on Oregon Trail. Two. <laughs> that that's, that was, that was was uh, popular in the schools when I, by the time I, I I was in school. But it, Oregon Trail is still a classic to this day. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody died of dysentery. All yep. the time, all the, all time. the time. Even in Oregon Trail too. That's this. That's what it always is. <laughs> nice. And I was looking up. There is actual a remake of it. That came out in 2011 on the Wii. 
but uh, I probably wouldn't recommend it because I'm looking at reviews and uh, it, it has, you know, GameSpot gave it a three out of ten. Let's you know how that remake went. Uh, oh, so. all right. It went, yeah. yeah. At one point, <laughs> it was fairly collectible, though. I don't know if that's still the case. Oh. Oh. Just one of those cases where a shovelware title doesn't sell very much, and eventually people who want to get a complete set just have to get it, and it's not around in the stores. Yeah, I'm seeing it. You can get it for about 60 bucks now, so good luck with that if you really want to have it in your collection. Nice. Where in the world in Car- where in the world where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Gosh, you can't talk today. That came out in 1985. The show or the or is there a game? There's a no, game. it's a game. Oh, yeah, yeah. The show was based on the game. Yeah, you learn something new that every day. By Broder, Broder, I, guess I still can't pronounce it. Broder, Broder Bund Software. I think yeah. it was the. Uh, oh man, I rem- I remember that just uh, answering all the questions and then hearing the. Uh, the siren, uh, the police car siren as they chase uh, Carmen. If you if you're finding her in the right spot, I used to play that game nonstop on my computer. Wow, that was a lot of fun. Huh. Yeah. So that game came out in 1985. Gauntlet um, came out in 1985. Yeah. Oh, now nice. that game is also is. I mean, I remember playing that. I had the NES version growing up, and that that game was amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a good game. Uh, Kurt on uh, on our show on our podcast. That's his. That's his game. Like whenever we go to the arcade, that he makes a beeline straight for Gauntlet. Uh, I don't blame him. Yeah, that yeah, that was awesome. That was that was a really fun game. Hmm. And you also had Ghosts and Goblins. And that game was really hard. <laughs> that game. <laughs> I got that. So when I got my NES for Christmas. Um, my parents bought me uh, Ghosts and Goblins. And I can't tell you how many times I played that game and how many times I could never get past, like, the second stage. <laughs> but I kept trying, you know, because it was, you know, I only had, like, three games, so. <laughs> but that's yeah, one of those ones that's hard as heck, but it's fair and it's well-made, so you don't really get, can't get too mad at it. Yeah. Uh, I yeah you can <laughs> I, <laughs> no no I, I agree with you but I, yeah I, but I got I got so mad just fighting uh, just when you get up to Firebrand and that first level the flying uh, red demon just like how he swoops down it's just there's nothing I can do the only way I was able to do any good is when I if I was able to be if I was lucky and I was able to get the throwing knives instead of the um, the javelins or the spears that to me that then then I had a fighting chance but still it was it was almost impossible i can't believe there were people who were out there who were able to beat it twice to get the real ending yeah that's so the crazy. insane part to me yeah so i a small question like now that that's a game that's pretty heavily ran in the uh speed running circuit so how does it make you feel when you like when you that you know people out there that can just beat it in i, I don't know what the record is but let's just say an hour or so I, that makes me just feel terrible that about my skills even back then. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. I know the feeling. <laughs> uh, the game Commando came out in 1985. Uh-huh. Which is the prequel to Bionic Commander. Commander? Commando? Bionic oh. Commando. Yeah. I, that I did not know. Yeah. Uh, both games are very hard. Let me jump back for a second. I just quickly looked up a speed runs for Ghosts and Goblins. Mm-hmm. Um, twenty one forty five. Holy, Holy cow! Man, I gotta watch that. I gotta watch that. Yeah, that's <laughs> they're they gotta be using a game genie or something. Uh, <laughs> speed running stuff though, they get real Intense. particular about their rules too. Oh so yeah, you got to do it. I mean, original hardware most of the time and everything. Mm-hmm. So, like, I see another one that's under 21 minutes. Um, I see one that's under 60 seconds. They got to glitch that somehow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, oh, gosh. Now I, I now I have to watch it. I got to watch it. <laughs> uh, I got to see how it's done. <laughs> the game Sky Kid came out in 1985 as well, which I just got the Namco Museum uh on the switch today and it comes with sky kid so oh nice. yes it does which is not a great game but <laughs> i have to say i have never heard of sky kid before 
Oh, it's like it's like 1980 or what? Um, what was that? What was that? Um, 1943, kind of like. Yeah. Okay. Fly it around and you bomb things. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it was like a very popular thing back then. Shooters. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is this what yeah. caused kids to, to become violent? <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, 1985, that was a time when, I don't know, kids were influenced by comic books and video games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Animals. <laughs> <laughs> that was before your time, Carrington. <laughs> Barely. Uh, any other games that stuck out to anybody? Not really. No, Not yeah, really. you hit on all no. the major ones. Yeah, yeah, because like you guys said earlier, like Super Mario Brothers, when that came out with the NES, that like saved gaming. So this was not a. It was a good year for gaming in the sense that you know a lot of classes came out that year, but not a lot of games were being made just yet. Yeah. All right. Well, then uh, let's take a break here, and then when we come back, we'll talk about the game. Uh, that we're highlighting this episode, which is Paperboy. Stay tuned. Have you ever been reading through a stack of comics and thought, hey, maybe I should see what the Arkham Asylum game is all about, or been playing Marvel vs. Capcom, and felt like you were at a real disadvantage because you didn't know who half the characters were? Well, Play Comics is the show for you. I'm Chris, and each episode, I take a look at video games based on comic book properties and how well they stick to that source material. So, whether you know the comics and want to actually learn how these games work, or know the games and want to know what the hell is going on, go check out Play Comics at playcomics.com, the Brain Trust Bros Network, or wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Hey, 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 it's Carrington from Real Dudes Podcast, and with me I have some fantastic co-hosts. Guys, why don't you introduce yourselves? This is Andrew, coming to you from Lynchburg, Ohio. This is Cody, coming from you also from Ohio. And this is Kyle, coming to you straight from the armpits of West Virginia. We are an indie gaming podcast. We all share a love for games, um, and you can check out our show on Podbean. Uh, just search for Real Dudes Podcast. You can also find us on iTunes, uh, Google Play, um, it, really any of the podcasting outlets that you like to use. Again, that is Real Dudes Podcast. Uh, be sure to check us out on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, if you love video games, you will love our show. What's up, everybody? I'm Tyler. I'm Lucas. And I'm Chris. And we're better than static. We meet up once a week and talk about movies, comics, and video games. I don't I don't want to talk about that. What why why are you complaining about all the topics I bring up? I'm trying to sound professional, Chris. But we're not that good. We we are too good. We may not be great, but we are better than static. You guys can hit up iTunes, Podbean, Google Play, and YouTube to check us out. Remember that feeling of playing an ultra hard video game and dying over and over and over? Ah! Yeah, so do we. Listen to the Controller Throwers podcast on iTunes and Google Play. And check out the live show every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time at twitch.tv slash tcthrowers. The Controller Throwers. Pressing start since 1985. If you like video games, debates, and silly banter, you'll love Gamerhead's podcast. Outside of your store, because I do feel like your store knows its identity. I do. I think that you guys know what um, you are. No? Not always. Really? He sells fidget spinners. Well, not anymore. I mean, for a yeah, while. But, not I mean, anymore. Not, not You're experimenting not not with anymore. Our... That's what I'm saying, though. You were just experimenting. <laughs> <laughs> was made by a Japanese guy. Yeah. Yeah. Go Iwata. Yeah. Speaking oh, the ju- game. Yeah, not the okay. sport. Yeah. Okay. I was yeah. like, huh. Well, speaking of Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> Follow Gamerheads on Podbean at gamerheadspodcast.podbean.com. Hey. 
And we are back with Crossplay Compatible. And we are here talking about a game that is near and dear to all of us, especially Roger, because he lived it. <laughs> 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 that is Paperboy, because it released in the year we were talking about, 1985. Guys, what are your like fondest memories about good old Paperboy? I hate this game. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this classic? It is a classic. Too. <laughs> I hate this game too. Uh, really? Yeah, this. It was frustrating. It was a tough game. Yeah, yeah. It was super but, hard. I, I mean, I I mainly played it on the uh, on the NES. Yep. And I, I don't know. I can't remember. I I think I got like about maybe five stages in, and then just things got to. It was always the curb, uh, trying yeah. to get like the driveway or the curb. And just like yes. the, coll- the the collision detection there, it's like, come on, I'm 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 trying to, you know, I'm, I'm riding a bike here. It's not that hard, but yeah. yeah, but but again, I kept coming back to it. Yeah, and did we, did you guys ever play the arcade of this? No, I never I did, did. Yes. and I probably would have liked that one a lot better because I played it mostly NES and a little bit of Game Boy. Oh. Yes. Okay. So yeah, so I played, um, I played the arcade. I played the arcade, um, which actually I, I'm very lucky to have uh, an arc, a major arcade within like a half an hour drive from me. Nice. And so they had the original Paperboy with it's not a joystick, it's bike handles that yeah. you used to steer. Yeah. How did that work? Did that work well, or was it kind of crappy? No, it worked out. It worked really well. You oh. know, I still crashed into the curb and everything. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, it was it worked out just fine, and it was a lot of fun to play. Wow. Yeah, I remember the first time I I played it. It was definitely the NES version, and I remember thinking, "Man, this is like the coolest game ever!" And I would always try and play. It. I was playing it all the time whenever I could get my hands on it. But I haven't played it since I was a little kid. Oh, you haven't. I just played it like today, actually. As a refresher? As a refresher, yeah. And it's bad. <laughs> I, 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 well, it's not. It's not bad. I mean, it's good for. I mean, even even I think it, it plays okay even today, but it's just so hard. I made it to the third day, and I'm like, this sucks. <laughs> That's what I thought. I thought it was the game, but, you know, maybe it's just user error. <laughs> I'm just not a big fan of those old arcade style, you know, go through the same level over and over, and they just keep making it incrementally harder and harder kind of yeah. games. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, the, I, I only played it on the NES as well. Um, but did you? I didn't know this. When I was looking this up, I didn't realize that Paperboy was – the very first NES game developed in the United States for, for yeah, for the NES. Really? Isn't that crazy? Why couldn't they pick something better? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not a very good first uh, first attempt. And then and then uh, and then the Sega Master System also got a, a, a version of this game, and they are different. Both games are a little bit different. The the. The NES version is the one that I'm used to and the one I'm used to seeing in the arcade as well. Mm-hmm. But the the uh, the Sega Master System, the graphics were updated. And, I mean, it still was the same game, but, uh, yeah, it had better graphics, actually. And that's something Not that kind of happened but, but... for Sega stuff all over the place anyway. Yeah. Agreed. Um, yeah. I didn't realize how popular this game was, though. I was just, I got this um, book. I bought a Super Nintendo Classic, and then I got the Super Nintendo book that Nintendo came out with that talked about the Super Nintendo and the specs and everything. And, and when that when that system came out, one of the, they had like a question and answer for the Super Nintendo. And one of them was, will games like Paperboy be available on Super Nintendo? <laughs> And and they said, yes, we will be making games like Paperboy and The Simpsons and Castlevania. Like those three games were like special, like were specifically named that they'll be making for the Super Nintendo. And I'm like, The Simpsons, 
Paper Boy? <laughs> well, Castlevania, they... I understand, but really, those other two? They did make some, a couple Simpsons games for Super Nintendo. They were good. Yeah. Krusty's, uh, Krusty's Super Fun House. That was a good game. Um, that was kind of like Lemmings. Um, oh, okay. Bart's, I, rem- I vaguely remember Bart's Nightmare. Yes. I think that, that was a good game. I like that one. Yeah. Um, did you guys ever beat this game? I never beat this game. <laughs> no. 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 Not at all. Not even close. I'm not even going to pretend that I got cl- anywhere close. <laughs> nope, me either. I'm not going to be that guy. Um, the thing that I thought was kind of interesting about the Paperboy game was the fact that they had, like, you had subscribers and non-subscribers, right? So, like, if you did a crappy job, like, people stopped getting your newspapers from you. Yeah. So it's kind of a unique perspective or unique uh, m- mechanic in the game. See, that was the thing that always bothered me the most. Like, I could never pick up visually which house I was supposed to throw the papers at. <laughs> and, like, I know they showed you the map and you're supposed to remember which houses there were, but I, I want to have something on the screen showing me that I'm supposed to give them a paper or not. It's just something that I could never figure out. Was See, it the color? I thought that, like, were, like, the blue houses the ones you had to do? I don't know. It, I played it for, like, a year and a half before I realized I'm not supposed to throw newspapers at every single house. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it might be something simple like that, but... By the time I would have been able to figure it out, I was done with the game anyway. Yeah. It is um, it is interesting because I think I had that problem when I was a kid, but playing it as an adult now, I'm like, oh, okay, I kind of get it. And I will say the Mega, uh, the, Sega, the Sega Master System, I should say, um, had a better, um, had a better, I guess, visual for it because there was actually like a doormat that said like Sun... Sun newspaper or whatever, because because you're delivering the Daily Sun, so I guess like the idea was, hey, you got to put your <laughs> newspaper in the mailbox or on the mat uh, that said the Sun newspaper. So yeah, I would always crack up when I would smash their window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the kid's got a hell of an arm. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? Um, and then. And then this game came out with a with a sequel to it too. Do you guys ever play the sequel? I didn't. I I, I had no idea there was a sequel. I'm watching gameplay, but right now it is, it's interesting. <laughs> so I I didn't know there was a Paperboy two. This game was so popular, apparently, yeah, that they came up with a sequel. And in a sequel, like you could do different things. Like somebody was robbing a house, so you could like take the robber out with your newspaper, or somebody was like. Um, fight there was like two people fighting and you could like hit one of the newspaper and the other person would be like yeah you beat up the other guy (laughs) what is going on it was so weird and then and then those things would happen like the next the next issue of the paper if you made it past that first day would say something like paper boy saves like the house from being from thieves or something if you did that that's just nice yeah such a weird game. I'm surprised as popular as the series was back in the day um, that well, we haven't seen too many uh, the continuation of the series. Like say, you know, you, like Mario, for example, came out that year. And we have plenty of Marios obviously since then, but we've only had really two paper boys and, and ports all the way up until I'm showing here. The Xbox 360 was the last thing to get a port but you can't even get it anymore. No. But they did have yeah. a version for the 64. I, see, right. I, I didn't know that either, and I've never played it. Oh, That's I haven't right. either. I've just seen it out yeah. places. <clears throat> so when I was um, so when I was in college, I bought, using my uh, using my hard-earned money from Taco Bell, uh, mm-hmm. I was able to purchase uh, a Game Boy Color for my wife uh, for her birthday. And the game, and I, that's why I was like rummaging around through my bin. Uh, and the game that I bought with the um, Game Boy Color was uh, Paperboy. For the, what? So I'm just showing that, showing off my uh, my Paperboy uh, collection. This is this is it. <laughs> just the one game for the Game Boy Color. So nice. um, yeah, my wife, she was always a huge Paperboy fan. So I um, I, I would steal it. Her her Game Boy uh, Game Boy Color because I still just had the Game Boy. But I, but I had to get her the Game Boy Color, so I, course, I would steal it. 
I'm going to borrow this for a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy to think that. I mean, it seems like Paperboy was one of those games that everybody was like, oh, yeah, I played. Uh, and it was such a, like, a popular game, but nobody really liked it. Like, everybody I've talked <laughs> to have said, I never really liked it. And and even today, like, I'll sit down and I'm like, oh, Paperboy. Like, even today, when I was thinking about how we're going to talk about this game, I'm like, Paperboy, I'm going to play it. And I played it for all of, like, ten minutes. I'm like, yeah, I, I remember I hate this game. <laughs> <laughs> I have actively not bought this game out of the flea market. <laughs> <laughs> but you have seen it, though. Oh, yeah, I've seen it. Like, I've been walking around with one of my friends, and he bought it. Like, I would have it in my hand and pass it over to him because I just didn't want it. Wow. <laughs> wow. I'm looking up footage of uh, Paperboy 64. It's not good. Oh, gosh, it's not well, good. Well, no, I didn't. I wouldn't. <laughs> It, I it, would not think so. It it looks like a 3D remake of Paperboy 2. So you have like the people fighting and, and the dudes robbing places and stuff. But it, uh, I, it's not good. Oh, it's not good. <laughs> it's weird, though. But, you know, uh, generally speaking, it's gotten good reviews-ish, I guess. It, like one rating gave it 88% rating. See, I, I would give it that. I, uh, thinking back as you know, kid self, uh, experiencing it for the first time. Yeah, I yeah. mean, controlling for when it came out and everything, it's not bad. It's yeah. just not the kind of game I would really get into. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot. It's, it's, it's... Relic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, what are you saying, Carrington? That uh, this game, like. I, I mean, if you or uh, look for a gamer nowadays, and say, "Hey, have you ever played Paperboy?" They probably have never even heard of it. <laughs> did, wait, I just want to make sure. Did you say that it's a relic? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying that I belong in a museum, Carrington? <laughs> no, 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 no. That, <laughs> nothing like that. It's just I'm gonna shut up now. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Um, it, Paperboy did make a, ca a cameo in Wreck It Ralph. A movie yeah, I haven't yet to see. You what? Need to, you need to go fix that, really? like right I know. now. Yeah, yeah. Especially before November. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't trust me. I will. Okay. And well, yeah, Karen, you need to see that movie. And actually, yeah. And if you keep an eagle eye out, uh, Paperboy also makes a cameo in uh, Pixels. The oh, really? The amazing Adam Sandler movie. That's <laughs> I can proudly yeah. say that I have never seen that one. You don't <laughs> have to. Yeah, <laughs> you're all good. You're not missing anything. I watched that in uh, theaters. If I can catch it on Netflix, I might watch it just because it's on Netflix. I think Netflix, it was on Netflix cares. at one time. Yes, yeah. I don't know if it still is, but it was on Netflix at one time. Yeah. Still not worth it. <laughs> Do any of y'all remember the show Nick Arcade? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Paperboy 2 that. was on there. Ooh. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. We just interviewed the host, Bill Moore. Uh, on I our show. should have so asked him about excited. it. I should have. Oh, didn't yeah. even think. Of, I think we talked about Sonic 2 because Sonic 2, uh, the prototype was on Nick Arcade. Uh, but uh, Star Fox was not. And what happened? Star Fox 2 never came out. Coincidence? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Um so I just, I just one of the other thing I wanted to bring up about this was just how many different ports there was of this game. So it was ported to I don't even know some of this stuff. Like what is this? This BBC Micro and Acorn Electron? I don't even know what that is. They're crappy old computers. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> the Commodore sixty four, Commodore sixteen, uh, Spectrum. And I, I don't, again haven't heard of that. Apple two. Um, the MS DOS, Apple II GS, NES, like we mentioned, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Atari, um, Amiga, Atari Linksys, Sega Master System, Game Gear, and the Sega Mega Drive Genesis. Isn't that crazy? How many different ports this game had? Hey, this Not game is popular. Yeah. Not to mention all the like the compilations that it appeared on. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like Midway Arcade Treasures is actually on Lego Dimensions. Yep. A mobile version. 
Yeah. Yeah, a mobile version in, 19, in, in 2005. That's crazy. Hmm. Yeah, and then, wow. and like, Carrington, like you said, it was on Xbox Live for a while, but that was, now it's been removed, so. Breaks my heart. Somebody obviously <laughs> still likes this game. I just don't know who that is. <laughs> we got to find that one person. It's not the kids nowadays, that's for sure. Carrington, you got to interview, you got to interview these people that made this game. I'm working on it. I, no, I'm not working on it. No, I'm not working on it. I'm not working on it. <laughs> I can. No, we got to get Katie on it. Yeah. She's the one who does all yeah. the, there we go. The older yep. games. She's got yeah. those connections. Yeah, yeah. She can. She can hook. She can hook us up. So, anybody else have any uh, anything else about this game at all? Uh not really. <laughs> Despite none of us really liking it. <laughs> Anybody listening should go play it. Oh, I've yeah, got, you have to at I've least experience it. Yeah, like <laughs> oh, it's it's think, not super horrible. It's just it. not modern at all. Yeah, you'll get no, bored of it after about ten minutes, if that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the only other thing is, if you ever um, have you ever watched any of the videos by Mega Sixty Four? Yes. No. So Mega Sixty Four, they're kind of like. Um, they, you know, they do a lot of like parody videos. It's it's funny. It's just it's silly and it's wacky. Uh, they do like hidden camera videos to get you know to see uh, just the regular regular people's reactions to their video game related stunts. Uh, so what they did was they did a uh, an episode based on Paperboy where they there was they set up cameras like on their on the street lamps and stuff like that. So at like five in the morning, it's still dark out, and the guy is the guy is coming on the coming uh, down the street on his pickup truck throwing the newspapers out on people's porches and all the, uh, all the mega 64 people were dressed up as different enemies from the game That's and right. they would just <laughs> run out into the streets and just mess with them. Like there was a guy break dancing in the streets and, uh, <laughs> uh and, and a person, uh, dressed like an old lady with the, with the, uh, rolling pin. You know, <laughs> it's just a look on the guy's face. Like what the heck is going on here? <laughs> so if you, yeah, if you if you got nothing better to do on YouTube, just type in, look up Mega64 Paperboy. You'll get a kick out of it. Nice, nice. All right. Well, I think I think that wraps up um, the show. Why don't we go around, though, before we end this call, or before the call, before we end the show, <laughs> call for us. Um, why don't we go around and tell people how they can get a hold of us? And, uh, and then, oh, we should also talk about what's happening uh, later on this month as well. It's a good idea. Uh, so Mike, you want to, yeah, sure. Yeah. I'll go first. So, um, feel free to check us out. We're the controller throwers podcast. Uh, we talk of course about all things video game related. Uh, we air every Tuesday nights at eight o'clock central standard time. Uh, you can also find us on iTunes and Google play. Just search for the controller throwers. Thank you very much. Nice. I'm Chris. Next? You can find me over <laughs> at playcomics.com where I look at video games based on comic properties and how well they stick to that source material. Or you can find me over all your favorite podcatchers and stuff or on Twitter at playcomicscast. Nice. And I'm Carrington with Real Dudes Podcast. We talk about uh, independent games. Um, we talk about uh, mostly independent games uh our next episode we focus on old man's journey and membrane so keep an eye out and uh we've got some big stuff coming up nice and i am roger uh one of the uh host on the gamer heads podcast uh where we typically debate hot topics uh in the gaming industry uh you can check us out on podbean at gamerheadspodcast.podbean.com um, or on iTunes as well. And you can also find us on Twitter at GamerheadsPC. All right. Thanks, everybody. This is a lot of fun. Oh, one last thing. We should talk about what we're doing then at the end of the month. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, so March 24th. So, uh, as we all know, uh, at the end of the uh, at the end of the month on March, March 29th or is it the 30th? I should have had the calendar open. I know it's a Saturday. March, thir the Saturday. March 30th. So... So March 30th um, is a movie a long time in the making, Ready Player One, which has a lot, and I mean a lot, of references to video games, references to the 1980s. Uh, it's definitely a, a, a gamer's uh, dream movie because there's so many cameos 
from so many different video game characters. Even in the previews alone, we've seen um, just just countless amounts of, of characters. So to celebrate that game coming out on March 24th, um, all the uh, podcasts that are a member of Crossplay Compatible, we're going to be hosting a uh, stream of a Ready Player One streamathon. So we're all going to be playing different games that are featured in the movie, different games that were featured in the book. Uh, we'll be celebrating and getting ready for that uh, for that movie to come out. So feel free to check us out. We'll uh, we'll be talking to you all day. Yeah, that'll be fun. Looking forward uh, to it. And then also, um, so I, we'll we'll I'll have to look and see when we'll have this air on a regular basis. Probably, I don't know Thursday nights probably, but what, Monday nights on our on our Twitch channel Crossplay Compatible, uh, we will have all of us. Uh, anyway, it's available, I should say, uh, get together and talk about what we'll be discussing on each perspective's uh, podcast and uh, talking about what uh, what we got coming up for the week. So Sounds yeah. good. So I'm excited. Me too. So follow us. <laughs> <laughs> so follow us there. All right. Tease. Thanks, everybody, for... I have two interviews coming up this week. What are they? Find out tomorrow. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh, man, Carrington, you're just dangling that out there, aren't you? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And uh, for Chris, Mike, Carrington, and myself, uh, Cross Play Compatible out. <laughs>